If you want to create the awesome Kylo Ren lightsaber effect in HitFilm Express totally for free and without any add-ons, well, there's this great way to do it and I'll show you just how. So here we are in the software. What you want to do is start by importing your footage from here. I have my footage imported already, so I'll just right click it and create a composite shot. I'm just going to quickly darken my footage using the glow darks effect to make it look real sinister. I'll bring up the intensity just a notch and I'll bring the threshold way up to 100. Now create a plane layer, make sure it's black and call it lightsaber. Go to the effects panel, grab the light sword 2 point auto effect and drop it onto the lightsaber plane. Now we're basically going to tweak the settings of this effect to first create a normal lightsaber effect. I'm mostly just going to use the same settings as they recommend in the FX Homes tutorial. Click the card on screen to watch that video and to get more familiar with the light sword effect. Set the blend mode of your lightsaber layer to screen or add to get rid of the black background and to blend it in with the scene well. I'm going to set the core width to 400 and also move the color ever so slightly into red. Set the feather to 100%. Now set the inner glow width to 35, color to light red, alpha to 0.3 and I'll bring the stability down to 50. I'll set the outer glow width to 150, color to dark red, and alpha to 0.55. Also, I'll turn off auto scale and the auto scale persistence controls and set the motion persistence to 250 to fan the blade a bit more while it's moving. Finally, set the distortion to zero. Now that's that for the first light sword effect. Create a duplicate of this effect as suggested in the tutorial which I mentioned earlier. By creating a duplicate of the effect, we gain even more control on how the lightsaber looks. I'm just going to quickly rename the copy to Light Sword Enhancement. Now I'll open it up and set the core width to 300. Basically, I want it to be less than the width of the original effect. Bring down the feather as well to around 70. Make sure to set the stability to 100% as well, because things can get messy later. In the inner glow, I'm going to set the width to 80, alpha to 0.4, and I'll also shift the color into a slightly darker red. In the outer glow, I'll make its width 250 and alpha 0.4. Now what you want to do is duplicate the second light sword effect. I know it sounds a little crazy to use three light sword effects for a single Kylo Ren lightsaber, but don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to add another one. Rename it to Plain Core. Open it up and bring down both the inner glow and outer glow width to zero. This is the core to creating a proper Kylo Ren lightsaber effect, as you will soon see. Make sure the plane core is at the top and the other two effects are below it. Okay, now at last we can get started with the main effect. Go to the effects tab, grab the heat distortion effect, and drop it right below the plane core. Basically, any effect affects the effect. Whoa. I'll give that another go. Any effect affects the effect above it. What that means is, if I brought the heat distortion to the bottom, then it would distort all of these effects. If I brought it to the top, then it would affect none of them. I want it to only affect the plain core, so I'll leave it here. The reason I created the plain core, and why I only want it to get distorted, is that when you apply heat distortion to the whole lightsaber effect, it distorts the glow as well, which can look a bit weird. The Kylo Ren lightsaber relies heavily on getting the right settings in the heat distortion. So go ahead and open it up. A scale of around 20 works well, along with a distortion of somewhere around 250. Set the diffusion strength to 100. Open up the animation settings and bring the wind speed down to 0. Set the noise speed to something like 13. What happens when you turn up wind speed is that the noise starts moving from bottom to top. If you like that look, you can turn up the wind speed, but I personally don't, so I'll leave it at zero. Let's leave the lightsaber at that for the time being. The next thing we gotta do now is to make sure the lightsaber moves along with the hilt prop, so we're gonna motion track the hilt. 
First, we gotta create a few point layers, which will be used to store our tracking data and to position our lightsaber. Make a point layer and call it Hilt. Make another one and call that Tip. Create yet another one and call it Left. Make one final point and call it Right. The last two points are meant for the cross guard, which we'll look at a little later. Now for the motion tracking. Open up your footage on the timeline and insert a tracker. Set the type to double points. Move ahead to the frame where you want the ignition to begin and position one tracker at the tip of the hilt and one at the base. The problem with my footage is that the whole hilt is invisible most of the time. So I guess I'll just have to place it somewhere up here. You definitely won't want to make the same mistake while shooting your footage. Anyway, press the track forward button here and let it track through your clip. I've already tracked my footage in the finish comp, so I'll just copy that tracker and paste it here to save time. If you're swinging around your lightsaber like crazy in your clip, then the trackers will probably get thrown off, so you're going to have to manually reposition them in some frames. The same applies for the frames in which the feature tracking moves out of frame. Also, if it pauses tracking halfway through and the positions seem fine, hit the track forward button again and it will continue tracking. If you want to learn a little in depth about motion tracking, then you can go watch FX Home's tutorial on it. Once the tracking is over, enable rotation in step 2 of the track panel, and for the layer, use the hilt point and hit apply. So far, so good. Parent all the other points to the hilt point so that they move along with it. We'll soon adjust their positions so that they sit in the right places. Switch back to the viewer tab, open up the light sword 2 point auto effect in the lightsaber plane, and for the hilt position, use the hilt point. Make sure the position values are at zero, so that it lines up with the point. For the tip position, use the tip point, and again, make sure the position values are at zero. Do the same for the other light sword effects. Turn off the lightsaber plane for a second. Select the tip point on the timeline and drag it to the estimated point of the tip. Turn the lightsaber back on to check if the tip is in line with the hilt. If you use a prop blade in your footage, then that will save you the trouble of estimating the tip point. I didn't use a prop blade since I wanted the ignition to happen in this clip. Next we'll make the cross guard of the lightsaber. There are two ways of doing this. One, the quick and easy way which uses one lightsaber for the whole cross guard. Two, the slightly harder way of using one lightsaber per side. To save time, we use the faster way so that you can get the basic idea. Then you can go and try doing it the harder way later. First of all, I'm going to trim the lightsaber layer to the frame where I want it to begin. Now duplicate the lightsaber layer and call the copy cross guard. In each one of the light sword effects, pair the hilt to the left point and the tip to the right point. Turn off the cross guard plane for a minute and position the left point to the left of the cross guard and the right point to the right. Turn back on the cross guard plane to check if it's symmetrical and reposition the two points if needed. Now I want to bring down the width of the cross guard. So I'll go into each one of the lightsabers again, and I'll bring down the width of both the hilt and tip to 15. Looks better now. And that's about it for creating the Kylo Ren lightsaber. There's another tutorial coming soon on how to create the ignition and how to light the scene convincingly as if the lightsaber is actually there giving off light. So keep your eyes open for that and subscribe to my channel if you can because you'd be doing me a huge favor. See you in the next video.